All right, welcome to part two, or welcome back if you watched part one on these DCM bookshelf speakers. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and do the sound demo first because I already have them set up and have been kind of working on breaking them in a little bit. <clears throat> not necessarily that I believe in breaking or not, I just, it doesn't hurt to do it just in case. Um, we'll do a sound demo. And then I'm going to pull them off the stands, bring them back over here to my work table, and we're going to take them apart and look inside of them. So, to start with, uh, I also have the Sony SSCS5s and the Pioneer BS22s up there, just kind of as comparison. I'm not going to have them hooked up or anything, because I just don't think you're going to be able to hear the sound difference. Because I'm going to be recording this with my Galaxy S9, and then it's going to go through YouTube, and then out whatever you're listening to. So, they're more or less just up there so you can see them size-wise. You know, all three of these budget speakers are all very good for the money. But, they're mostly just up there so you can see them in physical comparison to one another. So, to start with... Um, We'll be playing music off my HP ProDesk, which has Asus, oops, Asus Zonar sound card feeding optical into the Emotiva PT100 here. And then that feeds into my Behringer Reference A800 power amplifier. And then, uh, for the, anyone that cares about my cables, I have some Quad 14 of... Uh, pure copper cables that I've made with my own, oops, to keep bumping everything, into uh, gold-plated. Um, I, I prefer the BFA uh, style banana plugs. The, uh, the BFA style seems to fit in there a lot more snug. And yeah, since these uh, binding posts are already kind of shallow like a lot of the other ones, the uh, banana plugs seem to kind of wiggle around in there a lot where the BFA style does not. So, whatever, decent system, decent wires, and uh, let's uh, have a listen. So we'll get set up here. Oh, I almost forgot. I uh, will run something like this. Um just to get the woofers loosened up. I've already done this a bunch. Um, well, yeah, because oh yeah, of the 30 frames per second recording rate I'm doing here, it looks like it's actually going really slow. It's actually not. That's 25. So, let's see, let's do a different one. That uh, the camera can pick up better. We'll do 20. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, and the camera still doesn't show up. It's moving a lot faster than that. Um, but whatever. I'll do that for a little while. It's 20, and then, uh, you know, then we'll go up to, I'll try to do 50. This is. that one either let's do well you can hear it probably can't see it let's try 40 yeah the camera's only gonna pick up so much cone movement but um, do that. You can hear some of the port noise, and that's just because there's no other sound going on. It's literally just the woofers moving air. And yeah, some higher quality speakers may not make much port noise, but pretty much any port speaker I've ever tested in this range, doing this kind of test where you're just moving the woofer, you can always, almost always hear some port noise. But Usually when you're listening to music and by the time you have it cranked up so much, you're getting that woofer to 
move that much it's so loud you never hear the port noise and that's the case with these i've already done a little bit of listening and by the time i ever got them loud enough it seemed like you know was, the music was so loud you couldn't hear, there's no way you could hear any of the little bit of port noise so and then uh Let's go ahead and get set up. Okay, I think I got everything set up good enough here. Uh, the volume level I have the Emotiva set to should be, in this space, should be about 80 decibels, which is not super loud, but it's pretty loud, I guess. So let's get started.
wrap this sound demo up with the sexy song. So, now I have the uh, camera, whatever, my phone, mounted pretty much dead center and, you know, um, I don't know if you guys can tell, but pr about the same height as the speakers as well. I'm trying to just get, I guess, the best results I can with a cell phone. Um, by in no means is this supposed to represent, you know, exactly what these speakers sound like. It's just not really possible through YouTube. But these things are always kind of fun, and I'm going to bet they probably do sound pretty good even through a phone. So the next uh, thing here is to get them off the stands and get them over here on the work workbench and take them apart. So hang on, and we'll get that going. <laughs> All right, I got her on her back, ready to open her up. Um, I hooked up my uh, omnidirectional mic instead of using the stereo mics on the phone because I know I stand on the right, well, yeah, the right side of the phone and then all the sound comes out of your right speaker. So hopefully having the omnidirectional mic hooked up <clears throat> will solve that issue as if it was bothering anyone. So we'll get right into it. Uh, six and a half inch Kevlar woofer. Yellow. It's a yellow. So, oh, I have to, uh, these are, I don't know if you can tell in there, but these are flush mounted, which is pretty nice. They're not just mounted on the front. Nice touch. Tweeter's also flush mounted. Ugh. If I can get them out. There we go. All right, feels like it's got some good weight to it. Ooh, yeah, that's nice. Even the rear side of, uh, I don't remember what, do you call this the spider in here? Both, even the rear side's vented to prevent air pressure from building up on the back side of the spider. Uh, nothing DCR, three ohm. Hey, what Typical spider? manufactured, mass manufactured hey, speaker. Why is um. Wire looks to be of a good gauge. Good gauge. Uh, let's see here if I can read what. Um, looks like it's. I can't tell if it's 16 or 18 gauge, but decent heavy wire. I've seen worse. We'll go ahead and unhook this. There you go. Nice Kevlar woofer. Some nice gasket material on the back here. Yeah, some good weight to it. Um, it's quite a stiff, it's really a uh, stiff driver as well. I, one thing I do like about these is if you got kids around the house, even though this isn't really a true face plug, um, kids have a much harder time poking these type of dust plugs in. So, <clears throat> that's kind of cool. And let's pop the tweeter out. All right. Oh yeah, feels like a hefty tweeter. Always gotta be really careful when pulling these things off because they're usually mounted in plastic and it's pretty easy to bust it off. So I'll try to support it while we pull on the lead here. Come on. Oh, okay, I see. It is hooked on there good. Well, I don't want to I don't want to take a chance of breaking this lead off that comes out of the tweeter here. Um, cuz uh, right above it, it's just kind of like a lot of these tweeters um, it's just plastic that these leads come out and are supported by. But yeah, uh, part number 15 watt, made in China of course, 3.1 ohm, whatever. Um, this is obviously magnetic shielding, you know, cause you're gonna, you might put these near your tube TV, as shown in the manual, but the sucker's got some weight to it. I've, uh, I've built quite a few speakers in the past years and I know weight's not always directly correlated with quality when it comes to speaker drivers, because it could depend what they're made out of, as far as 
aluminum, I don't know, even magnesium alloys and you know all kinds of materials that high-end speakers are made out of. But I mean, this sucker, I'll say it, the tweeter in this is the tweeter. Well, the woofer doesn't really count because it's bigger than the woofer in the Sony CS5. But this tweeter is much heavier than the one that's in the Sony CS5. I really wish I could. I mean, there's a little barb on there, and I could probably work at it and get it undone, but I think I'm just going to leave it because I don't want to risk, like I said, possibly breaking it off. There's not a whole lot to be seen up here. You can obviously see they've put a decent amount of polyfill uh, stuffing in there. Uh, like I said, the woofer feels to be, or the woofer, the tweeter feels to be of good quality. It's good weight. Um, it's got gasket material on the back of the plastic front uh, face plate here. So we're just going to drop him back in for now. And let's see. I'm just going to run one of these screws back in just so when I pick it up and tip it around it doesn't fall out. So we'll see if I can get this position better so you can see in there. There's your port. It's only... I don't remember if, it, if it's flared on the back. It is flared on the back. Not flared on the inside. Could be part of the, what's attributing to the chuffing or port noise, possibly. Um, I, I feel like this port's a little bit small um, for a six and a half inch woofer, especially one like this that does actually seem to have quite a bit of cone travel. It's really gonna be able to move a decent amount of air. And I don't know, maybe they tune this in um, and I'm, it's not really a con because like I said anytime I've listened to them by time you crank these things up enough to where that woofer is really going and it might make and it is going to make a little bit of port noise they're, they're so loud you'll never hear it at least I haven't yet good quality wire gauge um, I've seen speakers like this that just have dinky little 20 or 22 gauge wire in them Let's see if I can get some of this stuff moved back so we can see the crossover, because the, the other great thing is these have an actual crossover in them. You can see that down in there. There you go. You got a, looks like an iron core inductor, which is most likely going to be for the woofer. Um, and it looks, it's, uh, hold on a sec here. The, let me get this closer, maybe you can see down in there. It'll focus. This wire get out of the way. Alright, the cap is, um, so you can see the brand on the cap, this will focus, there we go. Uh, Hing Tat, um, it looks to be a good quality cap, it lo definitely looks like it's a non-electrolytic, looks like some sort of audio cap. See the blue one right above it there, that's a standard electrolytic cap. Um, and then you got another air core inductor a small gauge um, I mean it's it's nice that they're using a uh, air core inductor on the high end with on or on the tweeter um, but they are able to do that because I don't know if you guys can't I can't get it at an angle where you can actually see the wire gauge on the air core inductor but it's a um, if I look closely it's a pretty small gauge which is okay <clears throat> still Probably better than using an iron core inductor on the tweeter, but um, looks to be a second order. I haven't actually looked too deep into the specs. I looked online, I didn't really find a whole lot more than the manual already tells you. Yeah, the resistor is probably to. I don't know, bring it to a stable 8 ohms or whatever. Yeah, these are 8 ohms. The resistor is probably to get it to 8 ohms. And then, uh, it's hard to say, but having an inductor and a cap for each driver, po good possibility these are a second order. It's a second order crossover, which is fine. That's great. Like I said, a lot of speakers of this price range, I've seen them with nothing on the woofer. It just runs wild as horses, and the tweeter just has a cap on it to block some low frequencies. And then <laughs> that's arguably, I guess, it's a first order on the tweeter, but it's definitely not a good way to do things. So this is actually, this is great. We got a good, solid Kevlar cone woofer, nice, solid tweeter, 
uh, actual crossover made with decent components, and then this just takes the cake for me over the Sony's. Look how thick the cabinet is on these. That's with the uh, cutout to flush mount the drivers. Get my tape measure out here. The Sony, it had a half inch front baffle. So by the time they flush mounted it, it left a quarter of an inch uh, for the woofer. This, I don't know if you can see that. Sorry, I mean, I'm doing what I can here, guys, but the dang thing never wants to focus. Get in frame there. Come on. Come on. Man, these things get heavy when you got to hold them for a while. Yeah. Uh, just a hair under a three quarter. It's a five eighths, I think. Yeah, five eighths. And then the actual baffle, the actual front baffle on these is one inch thick. So by the time they do, uh, well, what would it be, uh, chamfer this out or whatever to flush mount the woofer, you still got five eighths thick front baffle for the uh, screws for the woofer. But overall, the front baffle is an inch thick. That's just awesome. And then the sides, I can't tell directly, because, but I can guarantee they're thicker than this. If the sides, if I had to guess, are at least half inch to also five eighths thick. Um, the back, nope, the port's glued in. So let me see here. Well, I'm gonna a, a good guess would be the the front is an inch thick, the sides and the back, top and bottom are all half inch thick. And then there is no direct bracing side to side, which wouldn't hurt to run a, I mean, the, I don't know where you'd put it because the port's really in the way. It wouldn't hurt to just put the port up here. And you know, I mean, DCM, if you're listening, this shouldn't really cost anything, but move the sticker down here, move the port up here to the top and run a brace, just a scrap piece of wood, side to side in here. But even then, I'm, I'm still not complaining. This is excellent build quality for the price. I mean, uh, the the wood ones are the only ones that are 80 bucks. The, if you want this same thing, but in the black, then I think it's 100 or 110. But still, even for that, not complaining. And then, uh, Anything else I'm missing? No, I mean, this is, I have not seen many speakers in this price range built to this quality. This would, this is gonna have a lot to do with why these actually sound pretty darn good. I'm gonna, I mean, I'm gonna have to do more listening, uh, of course, but as of right now, I would take these over this, even the Sony CS5s. I mean, for me, the uh, Sony CS5s, now this is just for me, you know, this audios, whatever, taste. Um, considering that these, the Pioneer BS22s and the Sony CS5s are all arguably in the same price range, depending on the day and where you buy them, the price on all these budget speakers changes constantly. Out of, the, out of these, the Sonys and the Pioneers, I'd have, right now, I'd have to take these. If I can only keep one set, it's, it would be these. So, <clears throat> I'm not sure what else to say. I'm Actually, I did not expect them to be this well-made. I mean, I had an idea because, uh, because of their weight. You know, they have good weight, so I figured they would be somewhat hefty, but the quality of the drivers, the, you know, the quality of the crossover, the the cabinet construction whoops and um, we can take one more look at the rear binding posts let me get in here. yeah even the binding posts in these I mean like I said the by by uh, by wire by amping well, I guess, shoot, I didn't even look. Well, it's hard to tell because the crossover is mounted right on the 
on the terminal plate. Here, let's get these screws back in. We'll take the terminal plate off. Um, Cause I have seen where they, uh, where they do this, but you can't actually buy amp. There's two sets of terminals, but um, they're, uh, they're not actually separate. So, go. <clears throat> okay. Now, uh, I could probably get away with setting these on their face, but I'm going to get something real quick so I don't damage them. Put down a nice soft piece of foam here so we don't damage the tweeter or anything. Oh, it's a Phillips on the back. Yeah, um, if you're not if you're not already in the know, typically what this allows on, you know, we'll say higher quality speakers is, you can either buy wire, which not really necessary, is it just allows you to run two sets of wires to the speakers and I don't know increasing the overall you know conduct you know, connectivity you got to your amplifier. Um, I have done where I've run my A channel A to one and channel B to the other and then just run an A plus B just for fun. It's not really necessary. Um, on the other case, these would go to the woofer, these would go to the tweeter, and you could power your woofer with a, a class D and then power your tweeter with a class A, you know. Or... I really, I mean, you could do that with these if this allows it, but I, at this uh, quality level, I, I don't see the point. Okay, and yeah, I don't know if you can see, but where the terminals actually come in and connect to the circuit board, they are separate. Um, they connect at separate points on the crossover, so it looks like these bottom ones go to, oh, let's see, possibly the woofer. And these two are for the tweeter. I can't actually tell because I can't see the traces on the back of the board. But all that matters here, what we're looking for, is that these do come in separately. So you should be able to actually buy amp these, not just buy wire them, from what I can tell. So that's a, another <clears throat> pretty neat feature for such a budget speaker that uh, you can actually buy amp them if you want to. Okay, let's get her put back in, or get these put back in. Make sure I don't strip them out. Oops. And, uh, you know, I did this pretty much same thing with the Sony CS5s. I took them apart so we could look at the inside. And it's not that the Sony CS5s are bad. They're actually another great speaker for the, the their price. Um, the They actually have a little bit better crossovers than these. But um, uh, these definitely... Um, or as far as overall they are made better and it looks like you can take these out some people say these are inferior inferior to actually jumpers um, I doubt it prove it um, these are gonna conduct just fine the jumpers look cooler I guess but they're not they're really not necessary at least not in my experience Alrighty, so uh, that's gonna wrap up. I think all everything I'm gonna do for the DCM TP160S. Um, I'm so impressed with these. Uh, I think in the future I'm gonna have to get my hands on uh, maybe the, the <coughs> excuse me the towers or the bigger towers. Excuse me. And have a look at those. Now, as far as the home theater, like I, I, I think I said it in the first part of this, I don't. I'm just fine with 2.1 for home theater. I don't, I don't, not really interested in the whole surround sound and running speaker wire all over the room and everything. I'm just fine 
with a good set of front speakers and a good subwoofer. That's more than enough for me for movies because I don't really watch a lot of movies. I, more often than not, on my free time doing this kind of stuff, tinkering, building, fixing, than sitting around watching movies. So, yeah, that's going to be the, the wrap up for these. Um, any other questions, anything I didn't cover, whatever, put it down in the comments. And, uh, you know, I'll do what I can. I did pick up, uh, where'd it go? I got too much crap down here. I picked up one of these. Whoops, that's upside down. The Dayton Audio calibrated microphone. So I thought about getting this set up with some Roo and start testing some of these speakers as far as response and stuff. Because they say this goes down to 45 hertz, but, I mean, and I believe them just based off my ears, but that's no guarantee. So it would be kind of cool to test some of this stuff and actually see if it's uh, doing what they say. But other than that, I hope you liked the first part, this part. If you like this kind of stuff where we uh, look at speakers, talk about speakers, listen to speakers, take them apart. Um, I, as if you've seen some of my other videos, I take old speakers and fix them. Or I have another thing I'm doing right now with a set of Pioneer old Pioneer <clears throat> CS410s from the 80s that I'm kind of resto modding them. Um, I'm fixing them, but I'm not fixing them back to the original condition because most 80s speakers are garbage. So I'm, gonna, I'm taking these garbage speakers and I'm going to redo them and make them the better speaker they could have been. So please like and subscribe if you like this kind of stuff. And, uh, oh, what I was going to say with the microphone, if you want, I will work on trying to test these but yeah stay tuned if you like this kind of stuff and uh there'll be more to come hey dad hmm. what are you doing what are you doing setting this up for do a sound demo demo oh that's what you told I see. Oh, that's so cool.